they have something in mind. Like um, uh, Tigov pointed out, if he can get Ags and steal um, the Wild Axes from Beastmaster, that would be excellent. Because not only does uh, Rubik have more cast range from Arcane Spremcy, he also has more spell amp. So, like, it's genuinely, like, if it's if it's broken on Beastmaster, it's broken with 26% more damage than it did there. So, yeah, that could be insane. Absolutely. Um, but past that, it has issues, especially against a PL. He cannot well defend himself against a swarm of illusions that run him down. And that is where P uh, Rubik's uh, Rubik core has problems. So I'm not sold on it yet, but I'm very curious to see how Trun uh, what Tundra does to try to deal with this PL problem. I think it's going to be very scary as well. They had mentioned the fact that the dynamic duo of, of course, an Elder Titan and a Skywrath Mage is going to make a lot of problems. And their lane popped off last time. It did. It was really strong. Um, maybe it won't be quite the same. They'll have Warcry at least to amplify their armor a huge amount in these moments when they uh, do trade. But what's up? Is any okay? I was waiting for someone to pick up the rune. They all just dealt a split and were leaving it there for a moment. <laughs> they got three bounty runes. Incredible. Um, but yeah, uh, against a Baden who can uh, mitigate some damage with Aphotic Shield and against um, Warcry, once they get level 2 and onward for Sven, they should be able to do semi-okay against Elder Titan. And the other important thing is that they have a stun now. Last uh, last match, it was a, um, a Snapfire and a Slark. They can't stop him from hitting them, but now they can throw Stormhammer and just walk away. That is the hope, at the very, very least, coming out here. But will be an annoying lane for them to play against either way. And how do you anticipate this mid matchup going? Um, it's probably going to be fine for Rubik. If Axis did physical damage, I'd be more worried for him. But uh, Nine right off the bat is going to do fine. Um, he's got pretty solid dam damage talents right now. Fade Bolt, Bullet Bros. Hero damage can be very effective against opponents eventually when they get there. But laning wise, he's going to be he's going to be fine. Basically, Beastmaster is not really going to pressure him if he gets a lot of Boar levels, then it's scarier. But if he's just doing like Axe stuff, then Rubik is going to be absolutely okay here. Good to know. And already in the bottom lane, they're throwing out some of that harass. You can see Fata's already tried to uh, mitigate some of this. But a very annoying lane to play against either way. And we saw Skylark had a great game last time. Spartan is trying to uh, put out the harass, of course, in the top lane. There's not much that he's going to be able to do really against 33, but perhaps they can make some plays on Snake King. This is one way that they can actually mitigate the PL a little bit because Anchor Smash is just such a good harassment tool. Um, as is uh, Splinter Blast. He dodges the first one though with Doppelganger, but 3-3 is going to not have to worry too much about damage here for quite a while, and now they can even do an Arctic Burn on both of these guys. Now Spartan has to be Spartan very careful here. He doesn't have a pathway through. He's going to try to make his own though. Cuts it through using that Tango, but definitely has to be careful about his positioning. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he performs here with uh, Chen. He does end up getting some divine favor. Um, Chen has been adjusted a little bit in how, to, in how some of his skills work, but you know, heal amplification seems to be pretty good right now. Maybe that's more like lock it, holy lock it talking that's been popular a little bit, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Lots of fighting. Fairy fire. And he, oh, he just he's trying. He's oh. trying to get oh at the last second of the 33, drawing the first blood on Spartan. He did a tangle block there, which almost, or an ironwood tree block, which almost helped out. But looks like for now, Spartan just gonna be microing this insane heal. 15 <laughs> every half second. Watch out. You win the lane now. <laughs> Bottom lane, you just keep seeing that aphotic shield getting placed there on Skeeter. A little bit of a dive here coming out from nine. He's just poking away over here at Wish. Three minute runes are coming up, so he's gonna be able to toss them back. And go secure himself a nice juicy rune here, plus the body blocks. Nine might have gotten a little bit too cheeky here, though. They've got enough damage, so he ends up dying for the bounty rune. I'm not quite sure that was worth it. Don't really see supports rotate for the bounty rune on their side of the map very often, but if that worked, it would have been a good play. I mean, it's a big gold swing if you can get out of it, but a good attempt with the TP. But now that he died, teleport now, he's got to walk back to lane, doesn't have boots yet. That was pretty Ooh, That's definitely not worth big. it, actually. Forgot about the walk of shame. Yeah. Yep, uh, the walk of shame is always a big problem. Tidehunter, one of the best offlane heroes for dealing with this, like, stack small camp. He really doesn't care. He's like, thanks for the farm, suckers. And he just gets over here and clears it. So as long as he uh, updates himself here, it's going to be fine. Spartan's doing a great job last hitting, but... <laughs> you see the way that he's trying so hard yeah. with his little creep, too. He knew he wasn't going to be able to last hit that, so he's like, let's just get this shit over with. He hits it <laughs> once and walks away. <laughs> it's like, I got, I got stuff to do. <laughs> About to teleporting right back here to this bottom lane to provide the sport skeeter 
Yeah, it's gone for Great Cleave, no Warcry just yet, so not as worried about dying to Eltertine. Keep in mind how it went last game. Skylark obviously had lots of kills, which was very strong and good for him, but uh, afterwards, Skylark did not farm that many creeps. So if they just don't let him go out of control in the laning stage and they play the game kind of slow like they did last game, they should eventually make Elder Titan feel less strong as a hero. Um, one season. other thing that's kind of interesting as mm -hmm. well is that um, Sven just got a new talent at 15, plus 25% great cleave damage. This is the game for that because he's up against a PL, so we'll see if that ends up being helpful or if he skills it. I assume he will. I feel like you've got to when you've got this many illusions. I mean, you've, the other, you've got a little bit of illusion clear, right? You've got the Fade Bolt, you've got the Splinter Blast, but, uh, oh, they're really chasing after 3. It looks like they'll turn back around, though, and uh, focus up Snaking just a little bit. Not quite enough damage, though, to take either one of them down just yet. Interesting. And they want Orb of Corrosion as well in Tide just to get as much minus armor as possible when they harass here. Kind of cool to see. And he's struggling a, a little bit with that. Focus. Gosh, look at the Anchor Smash. Oh. This is not looking good for Focus. I think he's going... One more hit. Can oh, they so get close. there? Is it going to be able to get that in time? No. Focus will survive with 60-something hit points. Perhaps they can turn this around over here on Snake King. Not much mana Impressive left. They've got the ghost creep trying to put out yep. some harass. This is cool how 3-3 uh, is pivoting his build. He's gotten two points in Kraken Shell. We basically don't see this anymore uh, because it's just not that good to max out. Usually it's better to go Anchor Smash, but against all these Chen creeps and against a PL, damage block is amazing at limiting the amount of damage that they are dealing to you. So kind of cool to see the pivot. It's going to allow him to sit in this lane and basically just not be pressured here. Man, Fata is just doing the job of a support. 100% keeping Skeeter alive, making sure that he can heal him up constantly. It's rough, but uh, if you notice over in the mid lane, it looks like Wish has had to walk all the way back home. Nine will be able to secure himself that Invis rune does have those axes as expected. It's, it's kind of crazy how well these synergize. Uh oh. oh got a combo. Uh, Snake King turning back around. They're hoping to make a play over onto Skylark. He's just chasing down Skeeter, though. He's got these big old punches. They need just maybe one more hit, but they're kiting so well. Stomp coming through. Not going to be able to land on anyone. As Skeeter's still Think alive, that aphotic shield keeping him nice and healthy along with the mist coil. Skylark Ooh, trying to spirit. do what he can. He's trying to stay alive. And he is tanky, but with this many people here, I'm not sure it's going to be enough. He's making so much space. They're chasing him for such a long time, and they're just not going to be yeah. able to catch him. He's too fast. Look at him go. The only person with boots is the Wyvern, so very difficult to run him down. But on the bright side, nobody died. Skeeter is very close to his Mask of Menace, the item that Kyle did not expect him to get. <laughs> it's almost got a baby 200 gold to go. And then the, the most important thing is that by getting this so quickly, it's going to allow him to go farm somewhere where Elder Titan is not. And therefore, the whole advantage of Elder Titan that he wins the lane is more nullified because you just pick a hero that can jungle instead of lane. Something Slark couldn't do very well last game that in comparison to someone like Sven. So does this still, you know, obviously it's great if you can get some sort of an advantage early on, if you can get some kills on the Elder Titan. Is it still going to work out for them, though, for that, that early timing that they're aiming for? I mean, the timing's going to be delayed because he's not getting these free kills. And Sven has equal, slightly more last hits than Elder Titan does. So mm -hmm. if we compare it to last game, it's going to be very different in terms of game impact. Because what basically happens is when your carry leaves the lane like this, you need somebody to go follow him to go limit his uh, acceleration in the jungle or to mm -hmm. pressure him if he does end up getting low. But now that he's picked up Possessed Mask and he has Mask of Manus, like, he's just going to jungle for a long time now. And who's going to rotate on him? It's not going to be Skyrath. Skyrath can't kill him solo until he gets, like, a couple more levels. So this is looking great for Tundra right now with Sven having uh, having this good timing. Nine gets silenced the roar. Let's hold him into place as Focus will be able to collect himself that kill. So down goes the Rubik. And there's one of the weaknesses of the hero. If you are the guy that gets gone on, you are not going to survive as much as more typical mid heroes. So it gets blown up. He is queuing up Axo, so that's that is going to be the plan. It's all about wild axes for him this game, and that is certainly a place where he can seem really incredible compared to a typical normal mid Rubik. So this could be like the one situation that is going to make mid Rubik look really good. I think he's got to stay alive though and make sure that he can get it with good timing. Well, Otherwise, uh, it is going to be a bit of a challenge. You're right, but once he gets it, he's going to stand really far back in the team fight. Like, if we look at the Wild <laughs> Axe's cast range on Beastmaster, it's already huge. It is wild. It's yes. huge. And you're going to add like 250 range on top of that. So, 
yeah, as long as he stays at the back of the fight, it's going to be a great way to deal with PL as well. Magic damage. It does not physical. So even though PL is super high armor, he's going to be able to just consistently do a lot of damage to those PL illusions and whoever else he's harassing. So this can definitely work. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful for it. Mm, you're hopeful for it. I, you are admittedly like saying that you're not a big fan of the, uh, the Rubik mid here. So that's a pretty big deal. It can work here though. The, the axes is definitely really good. And these master levels are early, so boom. Easy solution. If you can steal it. Boom indeed. Well, some pressure being placed on the bottom tower, but it's like uh, 33, feeling very, very comfortable. There's not a whole heck of a lot that they can do over on the side of Brame to deal with this Tidehunter. As uh, Spartan was trying to just, you know, get some experience here, get a little gold, but is forced to teleport away. Yeah, not worth ravaging just for the five position. Ooh, but they do find the kill on Fata and that bottom lane. So that's Very gonna... versatile for sure. Give a little bit more breathing room here for Skylark as he's able to go hit the creeps and continue to just push in the wave on bottom. I'm surprised that, uh, I'm, I guess Wish is still, you know, he's working on that ag, so that's the more important thing, but I'm surprised that you don't see them, you know, trying to force the tower down as well, because you know that that Sven's going to be in the jungle and he's going to be trying to just farm up. So this is one of the other ways, areas that Elder Tyne suffers because he doesn't have good AoE. Normally what we do when somebody leaves the lane is you cut the creep wave or kill the creep wave really fast. He can't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to take longer for him to naturally kill the tower here. Good deny over the top lane, but Stalmanen is going to get ganked by four heroes on the side of Tundra, so... Let's block the camp, which is kind of good. Uh, Sven just got buffed for bonus strength damage, or bonus damage from God strength, so that's kind of nice too. Mm -hmm. Getting a little kill there. Uh, but he's been doing his best to try to slow this down. Before blocking this camp with a sentry, uh, the Skyrath Mage blocked the other medium camp that was in the jungle to the south a little bit. So is trying to slow down Sven a little bit because he knows he's not going to be able to kill him solo. At least he can like decrease some of his farm speed and force him in the lane where Elder Titan is. But again, ET is not going to accelerate that fast. In fact, his build is completely different in this game. He's going for a Meteor Hammer instead. Oh, okay. So one of the items that gives solution to heroes that don't have AoE. You buy it because it's going to allow you to push creep waves and pressure towers more so than you were before. So because he knows he's not going to win lanes here, he needs a way to affect the game positively, and this is one way to do that. Getting very close to that Agnum Scepter over on Wish. Just needs one more component. But I'm sure, uh, you know, Nine's going to be looking forward to that as well. He is not quite as far here for the Agnum Scepter, but it is inevitably coming. I'm surprised we're not seeing more stacks coming out for the Sven, because you can see that Wish, you know, he's taking care of his own jungle. He's got a couple of uh, little stacks going on with the Ancients. Yeah, look at that, five. Yeah, okay, so there's some stacks. I, I missed uh, yeah, seeing yeah. the Rubik do some of them. The thing is, he already cleared his whole jungle multiple times, is uh, is the difference maker. And also, if Fada goes and stacks for him in his lane, then Fada doesn't get levels anymore. Right. So Fada's been basically living in this uh, lane, getting all this free experience until he gets punched here by Skylark, of course. But you know, he, he wants to catch these free levels. If Sven goes to juggle early, this is a great way to spend his time. So that's why there aren't as many stacks as you expected. Looks like they're going to get their second tower here over on the side of Tundra. So that's two towers down now on the side of Brame. Skylark great. punching Fata, doing those things that Alder Titan like to do. He has to be careful, though, because the teleports are coming out. Here's Verena's Prox, and you can see 33 making his way down bottom, trying to protect this tower. Keep it alive. He's already done the damage to the tower in the top lane and the mid. I think he cut the wrong tree. Otherwise, he maybe would have been able to pressure there. But the fact they got the mid tower for that simple was really good for Tundra. With that said, though, there's a gold disadvantage. Brain has almost 2k up on their opponents. And with uh, Skyrath having 7 here, getting a kill with Beastmaster is really likely. Especially because Ancient Seals amplifying magic damage by 30%. That's going to mean these axes are scary. Snake King does get spotted. It's a nice stomp, though, from the Centaur as they immediately jump forward. They've got the roar. They want to just blow up Nine, and they'll be able to do it. But the nice Winter Spurs coming in will be able to take down SSA Spartan. Now Focus chasing after Skeeter. He's got no mana left. He's trying to run. They still have that one Centaur creep, but there's just uh, this army of Catmen just chasing him down. And oh, no, Purge. They steal the stack oh, no. as well. Where? Yeah, Witch very happy to see this. Boy, does he clear fast. Holy crap but great team fight for them. They get the mid player, the Rubik, and they grab Sven. And that was even with the, the haste rune on Rubik. They kind of played that aggressive and dangerous though. I think they were feeling confident because like that Centaur did break smoke and I think Tundra noticed that, but they still played up trying to wait for something to break. That way they could uh, haste away, but that, that Centaur stomp, the fact that they let it hit them was a pretty big mistake for a nine and limited their ability to fight there. 
I mean, they waffled with it a little bit. Like, if you go back and you look, yeah. it looks like the center, like, it spots them, and then it feels like it's going to turn around again. So maybe they thought, okay, they weren't prepared to see that many heroes. It was only, you know, two heroes, possibly, but they weren't expecting the third. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I, I think they just were hoping to break smoke and take a fight there, and they're feeling confident about it, but the stomp led, uh, set up the other disables, mm -hmm. and it was just way too much to, to deal with you here. You can actually see Here's it. The, the center again. just runs right at them. I guess not. Yeah, they yep. use the roar, the blow up nine. That was such a good curse. So, you know, Spartan does go down, it but was. all of a sudden Focus is here, and he's highly focused on Skeeter. He's got absolutely no money reaction. to do anything, so... Maybe Skeeter could have fought there, but it kind of looked like he could have escaped. So I don't blame him for trying to run. Because he knew he wasn't quite ready to fight the PL yet. So, But the Diffusal just dealt with him so easy. That silence, or the slow, sorry, was massive. Made it harder. You know, All right, maybe. and uh, Skylark goes back to Axe instead. No more uh, Meteor Hammer. Meteor Hammer would have been probably iffy. Um, just a second ago, it sounded like you really liked that that idea and the uh, adjustment. Just, just explaining the concept. Um, you know, buying Meteor Hammer on heroes that don't have AoE is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Trium Protector really benefits from it. Um, and, you know, I've been known to buy Meteor Hammer on heroes that I'm trying to make work as course. It's true. Purge ruining your pubs by buying Meteor Hammer on every single hero. Shake my head, Purge. Only heroes that don't have AoE. And there's a lot of heroes that have AoE now, okay? Being added <laughs> to shards and things like that. Decay just got buffed to do double damage to creeps on Undying so he can be more core-like if he wants to. That's true. Etc. People have Bane said shard. they think Undying is going to be uh, the next offlaner. Uh -huh. I don't know about that. Still got, you still need a lot of mana to cast Decay mm -hmm. on creep waves, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I get caught here with the smoke moving through the jungle, but it doesn't find him. Immediately focused, just shredding through all of that mana. And, you know, they do get the Splinter Blast off, but this is not looking good for 3 And he is very tanky, but Wild Axe is getting thrown out here by Wish. It's a lot of people on the other side of the river. I'm not quite sure about this. Stomp gets thrown out here. Focus, he wants it so bad. There it is, the Mystic Flare coming up for someone with a beautiful stop. Landing over onto two of them. The Winter's Curse comes out, though. Buys him just a little bit more time, but look at Skylark. He wants nine. He's just punching his way to victory over here. Fata's going to be next to fall. And Brahim is just running at the side of Ton. As we'll turn back around and just focus on the objectives. Yeah, they're just not ready to fight into them yet. And this is, again, one of the weaknesses of, of a Rubik. If the enemy team is running you down, you are going to have a really bad time because as, as a Rubik, you cannot slow this down very fast. It's very difficult to stop them from continuing to run at you. You need to play the outskirts of the fight like a support can. But first of all, they drain all the mana on Tidehunter with the Fusa Blade. He's basically out of the fight. The fact that he doesn't have a Soul Ring, you can maybe criticize here. Got the mana talent, but it basically takes him out of the whole fight. And now because there's no Ravage to impede some of the progress, it's basically Winner's Curse is the only ability, but it's really hard to use against PL. He ends up getting killed to burst damage, great stomp on the backline, lowering their magic resistance even farther. And then Skylark gets his first slaps of the game, basically, to kill Mine and prevent him from doing a whole lot. Just great skill usage and great rundown by Brame here. 5k gold advantage now in the live match. What a great, great framing. Much better play than camera framing from SSA Spartan. So <laughs> you can still see his joy, though. That's all that matters. It's true. You it's can true. see his face, too. A lot of the a lot of the players, you can't even see that. So, I mean, yeah. I think Fawcett just turned his camera off, for God's sakes. I believe that, yeah. Mech is ready to go on Chen. Uh, no sign of a shard yet, just there. Uh, how's the Rubik doing? About 1,200 gold away from his eggs, but again, he's 0, 4, and 1 right now. His KDA is not great, and this is a Rubik problem, in my opinion. You can blame his uh, Bounty Rune Death or whatever. It's not even your but... opinion, Purge. It's just a, it's a problem. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Nether Shawl picked up for the Dire Team if they need to use that later on against overall main magic damage, but on the bright side, the one thing going well for Tundra is Sven. His net worth is high. Um, not as high as Beastmasters, but still pretty darn up there. But I feel like 9 right now is just a liability. Like, it, it doesn't feel as good. Yes, you know, yes, Keith has been doing a great job. He's farming up. He's, you know, doing the best that he can, considering that there's a lot of pressure on the map. But when you have a mid that doesn't have an impact, it's a lot scarier. Normally, I would absolutely 1,000% agree with you, but I think that the potential abuse of Ags with Rubik Arcane Supremacy is very powerful. So, if they get to a position where Sven and Tide can frontline adequately and he can continue throwing axes like six times in a fight, then things can absolutely change. That's the only. But if it not if not for this like potential like wild axes cheese stuff that he's trying to do here, I definitely agree with you. I, I would feel like Rubik's game is over. All right. 
Well, some pressure being placed over here in the Roche. You've got the two Wild Wings throwing out the dual tornadoes, but... Uh... It's got Arcane Rune, by the way, so this is just going to be done really quickly. 26 stacks of axes here. Now, they do have to be very aware of the fact that Tidehunter does have a blink now. So they have to be careful, but already Wish will grab up that Aegis. Things are looking good, Brave. They've got their pedal down to the floor. They're going full tilt, and they have no intent of slowing down at all, it seems. Yep, they do not. And now they've got uh, Sanj Kaya on Beastmaster as well, so even more spell amp coming out for him, which is just going to mean his damage is even higher in these team fights. He's doing a great job. 007 on Beastmaster, top net worth in the game. It is kind of incredible. And they just nerfed Wild Axes with the Ags, too. It does a little bit less damage than it did um, you know, a couple days ago. So Clearly but still not very, enough. very good. Not well, maybe. I mean he's he's got some crucial kills. It's not like he's not just done this without hitting heroes, you know. Right. But sure. still seems very, very strong. The same thing with Phantom Lancer. We had a couple little nerfs, but he's still just very good. I'm sorry, what was was that a misclick? Uh yeah. Like a misclick. Sounds like it. Okay. You know, he's just flexing on them a the little shard. bit. Gonna have the Divine Favor shard though soon where you can uh cast it on allies and teleport them back home. Yeah, that'll be pretty effective um, against uh, people that get caught out of position Radiant. or somebody that's winner's cursed, you might be able to save them potentially. It's a six second delay, so it's pretty high, but mm -hmm. definitely has been powerful in the history of Dota 2. Usually it's like somebody gets doomed, you instantly send them back to base kind of a thing. Right. And then they teleport back to the fight with the BOTs. Mm -hmm. um, no BOTs just yet though. Yet to see a uh, a good Ravage here fight, but I'm sure they're waiting for Skeeter to finish up the BKB and then it's going to be go time. But you can see the way that Brame is just constantly, you know, going after objectives, really trying to to push around the map. But Smoke coming out from the side of Tundra now. Looks like they're going to try to force them out of their jungle if they get a good engagement. Positioning, though. Oh, well, they ping it out. They know something is, is up. Is not feeling super great. They feel a bit split right now. So look at the jump over onto Spartan. He's usually the one that they jump on first, but the roar followed up here from Wish. Plus, it's a beautiful just Winter's Curse over on the back lines, but they don't do any damage to him at all now. As again, the Ravage is going to oh, come no. out. Fata trying to run away. Nice Earth Splitter getting tossed in the middle as they do finally take down Spartan, but they're going to be able to take down 33 and Fata. Focus running away from the Axis here from Knight. Like you said, they do a lot of damage. They'll find the kill on the Phantom Lancer, but Skylark, he's hungry. He's searching, and they'll be able to slow down Nine a little bit. These Axe is doing quite a bit. Stallman and he wants this kill though, and they'll be able to murder each other and a bit of a trade. Nine got 700 gold from that kill. That was a mega streak for the Skyrath Mage. But ultimately, not a good fight for Tundra. I mean, things were about even in terms of experience and gold change, but the fight felt weird to me. I mean, they basically started with some great damage on the on the on the Chen, but they didn't kill him before the Stomp comes out. The Stomp caught um, Abaddon. Abaddon's forced to use Bar Time early just to remove the stun that landed on the on Skeeter here. Take a look at this, gets a couple slaps in. The stomp is amazing, catches the back line while the roar comes out. He has to pop ulti just to remove this, but then the winner's curse buys time for the Elder Titan and Skeeter. I think make, making the crucial mistake here, he slapped the Elder Titan two or three times, realized, oh shit, he's got 30 armor. <laughs> I can't do any damage. And because of that mistake, Chen dies a little bit slower. Maybe he could have killed Skyrath Mage instead, for example. Oh, I didn't realize he killed PL. That was huge. Yeah, yep. Those axes coming in clutch. And then nine here and yeah. Stalmanen. Look, he even goes and he uses his Glimmer Cape. He's trying so hard. He wants this kill. And it's already, you know, the shots are sent out, but they do end up uh, holding each other to the death. <laughs> that was pretty funny. All right, well, not as bad for nine. He's on the board, two, five, and two. They're still up 8K, but the fact that he cleaned up the PL is massive. It gives them multiple solutions against PL this game. They've got the axes, they've got anchor smash to lower damage, and they have uh, Sven's cleave damage. Well, the other problem is, though, they've already used all their ultimates. They're on cooldown over here on the side of Tundra, and Brain, they're ready to fight yet again. Look at them just running. A uh, little bit of a dive here on the tower. Wish throwing out those axes is able to keep a decent amount of distance, but they do manage to find Spartan again. He's just a little bit too far forward here, so despite the hand of God, he is going to fall. And now Skeeter has used that BKB. He's hoping perhaps they can get something else, and they've got their eyes on Wish. This is not looking very good for him right now. They don't really have the best save, so the Aegis is going to get burned. You can see Focus still standing on the high ground. They're going to be able to support him should they try to go up here. Axes. <laughs> so They're flying everywhere. Up. It's just all over the map. 
Which ones are which? Get some cosmetics for these, please, Ice Frog. <laughs> Ooh. They're building them up. Skylark, very damage. forward here, looking for a couple of the punches over onto Skeeter, Skeeter. Oh, but it's a good Witcher's Curse. It buys them just a little bit more time. And again, these axes are just flying left and right. They want to catch anything. The Ravage comes out. Vata goes down. Snake King turning his attention now over to Stominant, but over on the back line. Snake King, he oh will go God. down. Nine also to fall. These axes just flying, plus all the magic spells coming out from Skywrath as they'll eventually win this fight for the side of Brain. Uh -huh. And that, that all came down to Aegis, really. Uh, the the initiation axes. by oh Tundra going... I mean, the, the, the axe damage was insane. Like, that was so weird. Both both heroes basically are equally as strong in, in axe damage, but both teams have to play around. It was so bizarre to watch. But they had to wait for the perfect Ravage, but unfortunately, there's no BKB left. At that point, Sven's ulti was probably gone or low, so it was hard for them to fully commit to that. They, they got the wish kill initially, but he had Aegis, so he they didn't get an easy follow-up there to, to guarantee the team fight. And I... I mean, I guess Blade Mail doesn't really work against Beastmaster that well because he's still wrecking you guys anyways, but BKB, I guess, because he can't act as well through Magic Community, but it's I mean, hard to force the, the fight. They had it on Skeeter, but it just it, it ran out of duration, yeah. uh, especially on the second life. Like, this Beastmaster is just so yeah. tanky. He's difficult to kill. He's difficult to pin down. They can deal with him for sure. He's bought a lot of items that make his axes better. He doesn't have much defensively. Like when he got Gush, that was significant. It's a minus six armor while Sven is hitting him. It was a lot of damage, but they're not quite to a position just yet where they feel comfortable to take long fights. They basically have to ignore Elder Titan in these engagements. They have to play around and kill the supports and they have to not get bursted in the meantime. It's, it's a dangerous dance and very, very difficult to do. It's definitely a dance is a good way to put it, especially watching those uh, axes flying around and everyone circling each other. But they are considering the fact that, you know, hey, I've got all of these, you know, items that are going to make my axes better, but I need a defensive. So you can see the BKB is getting queued up for the side here of, of Wish. And then uh, BKB, I think, also was getting queued up for the Rubik as well. But again, we just see Axis lying left and right. Focus running over, starts thwacking away over here at this tower. And the rest of Brain, they're ready to fight. Lotus War completed on Skylark, too. Okay. It's a lot Good of, luck a lot on of saves. That. Yep, he's got to worry about getting. He can reflect Winner's Curse now. He's been getting cursed a lot because it's going to delay some time. I think it's maybe a bit of a trap. Normally, you want to Winner's Curse the guy that's BKB'd because it burns his uh, his some of his timer while he takes damage. But the downside is that like he can go BKB very often with uh, Astral Spirit, so it doesn't quite work as well. But you know, used at the crucial time can be very good, obviously. I feel like there's a Lotus Herb is one of those things that it's almost always very very good to pick up in a game too. Like that's usually it not something where you're like, oh man, I should have you know gone for this instead. Unless you forget to use it, uh, as many of us yeah, do. But uh, yeah, very good item for <laughs> sure. Removing debuffs, you could remove things like uh, uh, Arctic Burn. But it's certainly, though, the main goal is about Winner's Curse for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, they've pinned them pretty far into this base. Uh, you can see that they are trying to do a little bit of damage here in this top lane. They've got the Tide Hunter set up. Trying to. He's really the only person that can kind of survive an initial jump, but. They are knocking we out also, the door. They're not even knocking. They're battering Ram the door with the Spirit Lance Shard now. Ready to go. Yep. So ambitious here coming out from the side of Tundra. Again, the Tide Hunter in the rear now. They'll put out a decent chunk of damage, force them back. Oh no, that's his ulti. Yeah, it is. Fata is. Uh... <laughs> they go, they use the whip. Come on, Fata. Quick, get back in the base. You can't be out here anymore. It's not safe. Yeah, they got a little spotted there. The, uh, the Observer Ward saw them coming in. They weren't even smoking out. They're kind of in a little bit of a desperation mode here. They know that they're getting behind and they can't really map control. So they need to take a fight. So they got to run out together, basically. That's a 15k Very tough place. net worth lead here, Purge, at uh, 27 minutes. Yeah, that's, that's scary for sure. They've got to get a big Ravage fight in. But we haven't really seen that last Ooh. Ravage was excellent, but it wasn't unfortunately at the right time, but he had to. Look at the way they split though. Fata's smoke popping here. Looks like they're going to try to be a bit annoying, but something feels off. A looser ward. They're still trying to zip around here. They can see, are they paying attention? Did they notice a Skeeter? Okay, no, immediately disjoint here, coming out from Phantom Lancers. They'll go right back around again, and they'll just chalk oh, away no. over a Skeeter. The war comes out, the Ravage is coming out from 33, but he's not gonna be able to do anything because Skeeter is already dead. A Skylark just chasing down nine over onto the back lines here, and these poor supports, oh my goodness, 33 manages to make it out. Nine does go down to Skylark as he just chases after him and punches him in the face. 
Oh, so hard for Tundra, but they, they feel like they have to force these awkward engagements. And I, I think they made mostly good choices. The stun throw, the peel, you basically have to in that circumstance. But as soon as he dodges it and he swarms you and he defuses you, you're committed. And that's, he had to, there's just too much damage. The game just feels over now that Ravage got used in the same way. I mean, it was it was good positioning from 33 in the sense that he hit a lot of people, but like, oh man, they just absolutely obliterate Snake King, who's already died back. Fata running back at the base, 33 trying to get in there. They try to force staff him in, but look at this focus. He's doing his best Ana impersonation. The GG has already been called, but he's just slicing through everyone here in this fountain. And that's it. Brame, they're looking fierce and they're looking good. They do. They've got to be pumped right now. This is a huge match to win against Tundra. Tundra Division.